general rule, and you will lose weight. But at some point, you'll hit a plateau. And if you want, if you if you don't want to hit that plateau, then then the second you see your weight leveling out, that's when you start to look deeper. Are you are you fulfilling the five things that we talked about? Have you started to eat foods that are more milk based, that are more are more bread based? You know, have you started to have have more whole wheat whole grain wheat bread? Which you might say is healthy. Yes, it is healthy, but is it conducive to weight loss? I would say no. There's a difference. Healthy is not necessarily conducive to weight loss. Okay, what's the difference? Okay, super cycling. Ha, <laughs> superhero cycling. Yeah. So, when it comes to super cycling, what I'm going to say here is, if we look at the body, if we again with the Atkins piece, if I eat a high protein diet, a very low carb diet for extended periods of time then I'm actually going to get hypersensitive to carbs. Funnily enough, I'm going to talk later about thyroid. Thyroid is one of the things a lot of people started to talk about. I have one client who I've been working with, and she actually came to me because she said, I've had this thyroid issue, I don't want to get on the meds, my thyroid number is 11.3, which is just off the scale. It's the kind of thing where your thyroid is super produced, and, and, and thyroid is one of those examples of a hormone that basically can affect us, so there's not really much you can do. Because it just takes your metabolism and just puts it through the ring. And you can be as not as you can be as clean as you want with your diet, it's just gonna slow everything down. However, what's really fascinating is research shows that actually when you get into your thyroid, certain foods can affect thyroid positively or negatively at certain carb ratios. So actually a low carb diet is metabolic suicide for someone with thyroid issues. A high carb diet, people with thyroid actually respond to really well. Now again, I didn't say a fast carb diet, I didn't say go get yourself some Krispy Kremes, thyroid is thyroid people. Okay? <laughs> what I mean by that is a high carb diet is actually going to help clients lose the weight. Now, so here's the key question, right? So what if I have some thyroid issues? What I would say is, there is a way to find a middle ground. Because at the end of the week, we want to make sure that you've eaten a small enough portion of food that you start to tap into that ketosis a little bit. So right now, you see, hopefully what you're seeing I'm trying to do is find a balance where we can cycle things around so we can give the body a taste of this enough so it goes, okay, I better lose some weight, and then a taste of that so it goes, okay, I don't need to slow my metabolism down because I've been here for a while, and also give the body a taste of that so it says, hey, thyroid, it's okay for you to keep producing. Funnily enough, another thing to think about is protein. I've talked a lot about protein today and the importance of it, and so, and so did Courtney as well. What I'd say is this, is if we eat protein every day, then our body actually gets used to protein, and it ends up being a situation where it says, I don't actually need to absorb that protein because it's just constantly coming in. That's what it gets, our body gets lackadaisical about it. So to actually have a small period of time when we're not having the protein is actually really beneficial. Okay, so hormone control. So the, the funny part about this is if we can if we can stay within a certain range and eat foods that are slow releasing at high quality, then ghrelin. Ghrelin is basically our hunger hormone. Ghrelin is the hormone that's going to tell us that we are hungry. Okay? If we can control ghrelin and keep ghrelin to a minimum, then that means that you can theoretically speaking, as long as that blood sugar never gets too low, then basically we can make sure that we don't feel the hunger that would make us want to eat more than we should be eating. It's okay to be in a place where you are a little bit hungry. It's not okay to be in a place where you're so hungry and your metabolism starts to tank as well. Because if I go, that's it, I'm only going to eat 800 calories, then, you, then, you, then your body will ask for two, after a period of time, will just say, no worries, let me reduce my calorie output to 800. So then you end up being in this world where you've got 800 calories in and 800 calories out, and you're not losing weight. You say, why am I not losing weight? Leptin is our society. So basically leptin controls that hormone that says, hey, here's how full I feel. Right now what we're doing is basically hacks. I'm getting the body hacks right now. I'm starting to say, hey, how can I make sure that I don't feel like craving for food so it becomes hard and resistant? Thyroid, low carb versus high carb, we talked about that. Insulin, various in fiber. Fiber is another great tool for us. While it is not technically a macronutrient, if I eat something that has fiber in it, then it slows down the absorption of that. Okay? Also, if I eat fiber, and there's insoluble versus soluble, but generally speaking, if I make sure that I'm eating fibrous foods, then A, it's going to take longer for me to eat them, as opposed to drinking a glass of apple juice versus eating an apple. If it takes me longer to eat them, then that's okay. 
because then my body gets that for energy slower and there's less chance of that blood cycle sugar, blood cycle, blood sugar cycle happening. Furthermore, if I take that fiber in, it helps clean out my system so I can have a clean system. Why do I need a clean system? My intestinal system here, basically if you imagine a, a, a pipe and it has gunk all around the inside of the pipe. Now imagine that pipe is made out of mesh and I need nutrients to get through that mesh so my body can use those nutrients in, to basically heal and repair and make sure I'm ready for the next, next, next adventure. If I don't get those nutrients, then what does the body do? If I have, if I have lot, the gunk lining all around my intestinal system and I'm not able to get those nutrients absorbed as well, then all that's going to happen is my body's going to go, I don't have those nutrients yet. More food, please. So actually, having a high fiber diet can help us in more ways than one. What is BMR? What I'm going to show you next is your basal metabolic rate. That is the rate that you, that you would have if you were sitting down watching Netflix all day. Okay? No exciting Netflix, like boring Netflix, like, like documentaries. Right? So BMR. You can calculate your BMR in many different ways. What I would say is the most important part for you is just to know that the part you're going to see next is based on your BMR. Because anything you do above that is going to take me to speaking, be in, increasing your output relative to the calories I'm going to recommend for you. You guys good? It's interesting? Still with me? I know it's warm in here. Stay with me, stay with me. It's good stuff. Yeah. Alright. So I think this is part two. Okay, so low day, high day. Here's what we're going to do. To make sure that our calorie output at the end of the week is going to be okay, we're going to make sure our calorie our carb percentage is low here and our carb percentage is high there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a high day so my thyroid's happy. I'm going to do a low day. So that way I can make I can start to get into that ketosis. You got me? Now you can tweak this when it won't work for you. What I'll say is that when we had a, we do a thing called a 50 day challenge. When we did a 50 day challenge in January, we had clients follow this plan to the T. And they we had a client lose uh, 23 pounds in, in 50 days. So basically 20 pounds in about five weeks, about, about seven weeks. So to me, I love that because that was consistent weight loss, which came out looked amazing. Good. Uh, what are you hearing right next door is just a CMT class. That's these things that make this noise. That's fun. So don't think that nothing's broken, nothing like that. That's it. So, uh -huh. so, uh, so also you've got here fiber as well. Okay? So you have my fiber recommendations as well. Women don't happen to need as much fiber. Okay, part three. Now, so we've got a high day and a low day. You want to do a couple of those a week if you, if you want to be losing the weight. Now, we've got a clean day, hunger awareness. Okay? What this basically is for is the day where I say, rules off. I don't want you to live in a world where you're counting and calculating everything every day. I don't think that's realistic. I don't think that's a lifestyle. I think that's basically being connected, being connected to, a, to a calculator. So, so that you can start to be aware of your body, and because just counting the calories, you start to realize this has 100 calories in it, this has 300 calories in it, holy crap. I didn't realize that if I had a glass of this versus a glass of that, it would be completely different. No macro counting, no calorie counting. Eating only from a prudence list of foods. There's actually a theory that says, if I tell you only eat from these foods that are typically high satiety, that are actually really, that, that take a lot of effort to eat, there's something called the bread fruit diet. Does anyone know what bread fruit diet is? Bread fruit diet was very popular. Bread fruit diet was focused on only eating grapefruit. Mm. And what they found is that actually people lost a whole bunch of weight. So if I said, cool, you space right now. So. <laughs> So if I said, hey, you can only eat grapefruit. Yeah, who here loves grapefruit? No one loves grapefruit, right? Yeah. No one. No one's like, hmm, grapefruit. Only if I can like take the sugar bowl and like dump it on there, right? So what I said is, like, okay, if you eat the grapefruit and the pithy part as well, okay, as much as you want, it's yours. Very simple diet, okay? How much grapefruit do you have to eat to get 1,500 calories? Who wants to guess? 28 pounds. So if you can eat 28 pounds of grapefruit, you can do that. So that would be a real effort. That would be like a whole day, hold all my calls, let's get it done, right? So what I'd say is this. If you, so that diet worked great for people who had the willpower to stay on that. So for this, what I'd say is, if I give you an approved list of food and say, hey, start to eat, just eat how your body feels like it wants to eat, and that's hopefully going to give you results, it'll be in line. Eat to resolve, but not to, not to force. Okay? So I can be a little bit hungry at this point. Is there a lot of sugar in that? In grapefruits? Grapefruits are actually one of the lowest sugar, sugar fruits. Yeah. 
That's right. That's part of the reason why everyone does. Sugar added to it. Right. <laughs> See, that's right. That's nice. So yeah. So what I'd say is there's certain there's certain fruits with low sugar, and also if I get into it, there's different fruits that have fructose versus sucrose versus glucose. So like you know, people talk about okay, an apple a day being great for you, but apple, an apple is actually super high in fructose. Bananas are actually super high in fructose. It seems like blueberries are very low in fructose. Funnily enough, blueberries are one of the few fruits that the Atkins diet allows. Now, I'm not a huge fan of fruits, um, but uh, you'll, you'll, see, you'll see that if you, if you, if you're in the food plan. But then, uh, clean out day, 600 calories. This is our day where we have our fasting day. This is the part where we get into ketosis. This is the part where we don't, where we don't have protein. This is the part where we just have some oatmeal and brown rice in the morning, green rice tea during the day, cooked vegetables basically. This is the part where we don't do anything, where our body really has to process it. This would not be the day to work out, right? The low day would not be the day to work out. The high day that we have in the last screen would be the day to work out. Okay, the clean out day would be a day to work out. Got it? Unless you're doing fasted cardio, which is something I've been historically against, because what I saw was the research that I saw said, if you wake up and have fasted cardio in the morning, then basically your body burns more calories for that period of time, but then actually doesn't burn, 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 but then actually burns hardly any calories following that period. So it gives it, it gives you a great, great fat metabolism during the fasted cardio, but then after that it goes through the floor. And actually, part of that is because the muscle, but also the muscle breakdown that happens, basically crushes our body's ability to to uh, to burn fat. Okay. Yeah, I have a question. Yes. When you say days not to work out, so. If does that mean just not doing weight workouts, or does it mean not doing intense workouts? Not doing. If you wanted to run or do cardio, I would say that's okay. But what I'd say is this is not this is not the day for your plan to do something really intense. So this would not be the day to go skiing. You know what I'm saying? This would if you want to take care of a walk or something like that. Fantastic. And I'll talk about this would be the day to do your faster cardio. So basically, so for this, this would be two two days a week. Uh, and then two days a week for your, so for, for our food plan, we have a high, low, clean, clean out day. So two high, two clean out day, two, uh, two low, so you're basically working out four days a week intensely, and then three days a week, oh, sorry, three days a week, not as intensely. But the, but the clean out day is certainly a day where you would have your minimum amount of activity. One second, yes. Jimmy, can you write me a letter? Do you have me on fasting cardio? What is it? Uh, actually, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll, I'm going to tell you why actually fasting cardio now is okay, and I'm, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you advantage over everyone else with the fasting cardio. Yes. That's what I was going to ask you. Why you changed your stance? Yes, yeah, so I absolutely say no. I'll get you that. It takes a really good So um, I think it's good. sorry. In my nerdy fitness sense, I think it's good. So um, any other questions on that? Follow this plan. You lose 23 pounds in 50 days. Easy enough. No, except you stay safe, you don't need to lose 22 pounds. If you lose 22 pounds, I'm going to be trouble. What I love about it is the majority of weight you lose is actually going to be fat, not muscle. It's very easy to say, lose weight. Okay, but the truth is that actually, part of, what part of Courtney's challenge is that she's working really hard. She's in a bulking phase right now. So she's putting on muscle and fat, and then she's going to try to re get rid of the fat without dropping any of the muscle. It's very easy for you to lose, lose, lose fat and lose muscle at the same time. The hard part is losing fat without losing muscle. But if you follow this higher protein piece, then actually the body will be in a state where it will have enough protein and enough muscle to, to basically say, okay, I'm losing, I'm losing, I've got less calories, however, I've got this high amount of protein in my, in my food plan, so I want to eat that. Yes. So how long are you on the clean hunger awareness? How many days are you on? Two days. Two days. So, so two, high, two high, two low, two clean, one clean out. Has anyone seen anything like that before? This is really an, amal an amalgamation of basically a bunch of different food plans, taking the pieces that work from those. However, trying to create something that can be followed long term. Not something that cycles and then basically takes it so deep and then it suddenly jumps back up again. And then you have to do it all again. It's something that if we want to get in shape, that we can get to the best place possible. So your body is essentially transitioning from one phase to the other? Oh, uh, within the week, or well, let's say that your body actually never gets enough stimulus that it moves into one state of preservation. If I'm giving you a low carb diet for a long period of time, then your body, then your thyroid eventually starts to go crazy, right? If I'm giving, if you have any sort of thyroid, if you have any sort of thyroid issues, 
if I give you uh, a, high, a high protein, low carb diet for a long period of time, then you start to get hypersensitive to carbs. Okay? But if I keep your, if I keep your calorie in, at input low for a long period of time, then you start to get really, then your metabolism starts to slow down. So there's all these negative things that can happen, reasons why people drop out of food plans. And so what I'd say is, if we don't want to drop out of the food plan, we want to find something that we can keep going, that requires the least amount of willpower, this is what I've created for the real people, to be able to lose weight. If you want to lose weight, this is the part that's going to basically require you to follow it, have organization for it, but it's not going to require you going to, to break down crying because your friends are eating pizza. That's a question. I know you say food plan, you never say diet. Yeah. Well, so because the diet, the diet basically in our society has to start and finish. But since this is their food plan, I can tweak the plan. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't like the word diet because basically it has to start and a finish. People say I'm on a diet, right? Which means that eventually you're going to get off a diet. Yeah. And then it's all, like all the magazines talk about that. This is part of how I try to think about it. Is what's my plan? It's like okay, what's my what's my career plan? What's my work plan? What's my life plan? You yeah? know. Now, plans, plans need to be changed from time to time. Sometimes I can go off plan, but generally speaking, this is the plan I'm going to use to get to where I want to be. Yeah, I think it's important uh, in regards to your plan to cycle it, like high, low, pain, pain out, or does it uh, depend on that person how their body reacts? I would say this, again, this is the template. Mm -hmm. Every individual is different. For, uh, for you, you're on a different program altogether. You're, on, you're doing something that 1% of the population does. You need to get to certain points so you can get into certain valleys. And in, the, in, that, in the bottom of that valley, I know it's a very dark place for you, right? Uh, I, I got to see it first here. This plan right here allows people to lose weight at a moderate pace with a minimum amount of willpower. That's, that's what I'm trying to design. I'm going, because I could stand up here and say, hey, here's the lose weight super fast track. All you need to do is basically follow the food plan I have a system in place where I'll lock you in a cage so you can't go anywhere and do anything. All these infomercials are on TV. Uh, I've worked with people that make in infomercials. The stories I hear should be banned by the Geneva Convention. <laughs> basically, they, 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 they take 50 people and they basically sub them full of food, make them overweight, and they take those 50 people and they lock them up in a hotel and they get to do all these, like, so it's very much the biggest loser. And they just take the, the people who lost the most amount of weight and the rest just get discarded. And you end up with like three or four people that I show repeatedly through the infomercial that have done a lot more than just the vibrating belly massage machine. Right? That's